Ramrocks Kicklin on this episode of American Reef. We've got part two of that video from last week, which was a unique way of managing coral growth. So if you didn't get a chance to check out last week's video, we were basically over Mike Paletta's place working on that soft coral tank in that sunlit room. The idea was simple. He had soft corals that were growing out of the top, so he wanted to give them more room to grow. So what he did, he had those live rocks that were on those rods, basically took the big top, that shelf rock off, and took two of the little, you know, I'll call them filler rocks that were at the bottom, took those off, and then placed that shelf rock back down, and gave them probably three to six inches for the, for the corals to grow. And in this video now, it's three months after the fact, and the idea is, hey, what does that tank look like now? And did everything go the way that he thought it was going to go? Now, before we check out that tank, again, if you are a small business owner and you are proud of the goods and services that you offer, send me an email. That's AmericanReef at me.com. Again, I want to try to help to give you some national exposure. Uh, that, and if you're looking for one of the best fish foods on the planet, at least that I consider the best fish foods, that's American Reef's HPD. You can find that at AmericanReefHPD.com. No spaces, right? Now let's check out that Paletta Soft Coral Tang. <music> Mike's feeling sick today, isn't he? Mike just flew back from London, and uh, mm -hmm. Mike is tired and sick because, uh, <laughs> uh, let's say, an uh, inconsiderate woman who had the uh, sneezing, coughing, cold the whole time <laughs> sat next to me, and a day later, I have it. Miraculous, in an airplane yeah. with uh, recirculating air. But uh, we had well, to, to do this. Oh, oh, why were you there? What were you doing? I was there giving a couple talks. Uh, Southwest Marines, an aquarium shop, brought myself and Tony Vargas over. Mm -hmm to entertain and educate their customers. So we had a wonderful time. Everyone was as cordial as could be. It's a great place to visit. I had a great time, saw a lot. I'm gonna be writing up a lot of articles about it, it and I learned a lot. So it was a wonderful trip. Okay, so what's the, what's the one takeaway? What's the one thing that you learned that you like high up there on that shelf? Probably that we are better at coloring corals, they are better at growing corals. Okay. So it's yes. interesting what they're doing, what, with, what we're doing, but that'll all be written up on the reef builders over the coming weeks. And they're also doing stuff, I went to the Horniman Aquarium and saw Jamie Craig's doing his uh, mass spawning of corals and what he's doing to get them to that state. So learned a lot there, that will also be an article. So there's lots to learn in other places and that's why I like to give talks and travel and see things. Okay, and so hold on, that was London. Where at in London? Because London. Yeah. We are, we actually, I actually was in London to see Martin Lankin's tank and mm -hmm. David Saxby's tank and a couple of shops in London, and then I gave the talks in Bristol. So, like I said, at Southwest Marines. And then you got something else coming up, don't you? I'm going to Milan in a couple of weeks, the middle of October, to speak in Milan to the Aquarium Conference there. So it'll be interesting because what the other Europeans have said is the. Brits have one way of doing things, the Italians yeah. do it, but they're much more passionate. So it'll be interesting <laughs> to see if indeed they are. So Italians that will do be, it with their hands. That will be more future articles. So <laughs> there are obviously lots to learn from both. So I guess we digress for a little bit, but again, 
we we said three months ago when you lowered your tank right right we would see what happens in three months and <laughs> voila the corals have outsmarted me because they've literally grown to the surface in three months <laughs> so even though there was roughly six inches above them they grew roughly six inches to the surface of the water in three months sadly the one coral in the front isn't open up tonight because when it is it's like a big full bush of polyps and a couple of them aren't open because I cleaned the glass, and as you all know, when you clean the glass, the leather corals go and hide. So you can either have clean glass or open corals. Very rarely do you get both. <laughs> so unfortunately, that was the situation here. But you get an idea of how full and colorful the tank is, especially at night, and how much the corals have grown. So the next step will be what I said I may have to do, which I didn't want to do. I may go to a 120-gallon tank, pick the water level up this high, and then I dare them to grow the surface in three months. Okay, so yeah, well, let's let's talk about that. So, you, like you said, they grew to the surface, but the heads didn't necessarily grow, right? The heads didn't get any bigger, just the stalks like grew them up, which right. is kind of funny that they grew toward the light, because obviously it's been a very bright, hot summer here in Pittsburgh, and as a result, the corals were are loving the light. Uh, the clam that's in the tank has done exceptionally well. The goniopora that I'm testing in here has done well. Uh, the aphilias, I mean, pretty much everything that's gone into this tank, now that it's stabilized, and this is the simplest tank I do anything with. Dump calc phosphor in for calcium, do a 10% water change a month, feed it heavily, have a skimmer in Miracle Mud and Calerpa. That's it. Right, right. This is the easiest tank I've had probably in 10 years. Let's talk about the, the calc phosphor for a second because you were telling me that you want to take and add it to your other tanks. I'm going to add it to my 300-gallon uh, mm -hmm. tank simply because I saw a couple of tanks in Europe that were doing that as well. I'm going back to old school. I did that for years. I had no problems, no issues. I stopped doing it and went more to GFO. They run GFO, but they also run Kalkwasser, but they run less GFO. So I'm gonna, it's, it's another experiment. It's what I'm always doing is right. tinkering with stuff. And we'll see if that precipitates out more of the phosphate. I can run the GFO longer. And I'll see what it does for the coral growth. So, and you're still going to have your calcium reactor, right? Yes, and I'm switching over to a newer one, a Destaca reactor, which I will also be running up, which is also one of the impressive things I saw in terms of different pieces of equipment that we haven't seen here yet for the most part. It's a, a much more stabilized, reliable system than what I have seen with the calcium reactors here, and it's basically a turn of one knob instead of balancing three things, bubble flow or bubble rate, flow in, flow out. Uh, this is just turn it off once you have it adjusted and then it's pretty much set. So it will be interesting to, to start using this methodology. And now when do you expect to have that? In two weeks. And that's going to go on the 300? That's going on the 300. Got it. Got it. And so now back to this tank here. So you've said, listen, three months, the corals outsmarted you, you're going with the bigger tank. Bigger tank. Uh, this month's pretty, October's pretty much, pretty much shot. November, I'm speaking in South Beach and I'm speaking at the New Jersey Frag Festival on the first weekend of November, so probably between then and Thanksgiving before everybody comes over, I'll have a bigger tank here. <laughs> I mean, it's only 30 gallons, but hopefully that 30 gallons adds this much height and the corals won't grow to the surface. Uh, I will also probably drop the rocks and move them a little bit so I can see more of them, because it's not going to be as easy to look from the top as it is now. So the base with the, you know, the um, center rod, for example. Right. You're gonna still keep it, but putsy with the way. I'll that you probably have. drop the one on the right by one rock. When okay. I lift it out, I'll probably take one rock out and drop it down a little bit mm -hmm. to have even more depth, and then let it go from there. And then I'm also probably gonna adjust the water motion a little bit to blow over them a little bit stronger, because right now it's all with the surface. Then I'll blow more of the water motion over them, over the corals. And you were saying you changed the gyre because right? you had put a gyre in there. It just didn't wasn't producing enough flow on the bottom. So I, I'm going with a Tunzi next to, to really shoot the, the water around the bottom a little bit better. And, and you've been struggling with that, right? Meaning, I know that we've had like the sweeps on there with the Tunzis, with the Tunzi sweeps and gyres. And... No, we haven't had the Tunzi sweeps on here. No? No, we've just, we've just had the C-sweep on the back for the return water coming in. Okay. And two Tunzis pulsing. That's all we've pretty much had okay, on Okay, got it, got it. And so you're going to add some more Tunzis down low? I'm going to add some Tunzis down low to keep it circulating and keep... When I take, do the water change, I take out a ton of sure. nasty stuff. Sure. I just want to direct. The, the gyre did a nice job of moving water, but it wasn't direct enough into those dead spots. Mm -hmm. So as a result, I had to move rocks around and clean things out. With the tunzes being straight, 
I'm just going to shoot it into those dead spots, so I'm not going to have to fool around with it anymore. And then it'll go to another spot. <laughs> it'll find another spot, or hopefully it'll get sucked out, go over the overflow, and settle in the miracle mud. Yeah, yeah. And then what it, what's down there will eat it, and it's full of amphipods, copepods, worms, and other stuff. So any organic material that makes it down there pretty much gets consumed pretty rapidly. So that's interesting. So you're saying the miracle mud itself grows the zooplankton's? Yeah, I, got, I have a lot more animal life living in there than when I had a bear at the bottom like I have in the Elos time. Right. There's not that much mac microfauna living in that versus what's in here. Got it, got it. So I guess, is that by design? I mean, <coughs> from your end of it, you'd rather have it that way? I'd rather have more stuff. I mean, I've always right. used the Miracle Mud, for, when I say always, for the last 20 years, right. since 1996. Right. So on every tank, but one. So I'm gonna go back to using what works for me and toy with their system a little bit instead of following their method. Because I know what works for me, so that's what I'm going to do. And when you say their method, you're talking about that the whole Triton thing that you've the been experimenting with? The whole with? Triton method where I mm -hmm. wasn't doing water changes, I right. didn't have any Miracle Mud, I'm just dumping in their chemicals. Right. Uh, for whatever reason, it hasn't been as successful as I wanted it to be. Also, I started with dead rock, and I think that was one of the major problems. So I'm, I'm not dumping it on Triton and it didn't work, but the whole system that I did didn't work. Right. And so I'm, I'm going to improve it and go back to a Triton slash hybrid Paletta method. Well, let's talk. How many months have it been up so far? It's been up roughly six. Okay. So at six months, you're saying, okay, it's still not where you would think it would be, right? Or where right. you would like it to be. Right? right. But by the same token, this wasn't where I wanted to be at right, six right. months either. Yeah, remember you. So I mean, it's a, year, right? you know, it may take nine months. It may take, excuse me, a year. Right. So then in general though, to your point, like with this in here, you, you didn't fight it, meaning you were doing SPS, SPS, and you're like, listen, this, this location is a bad location for SPS. Because of what ha how bright it was last summer, the tank wasn't very mature, there was a lot of things. One of the other things I'm probably going to do now that the light is diminishing as we hit approach winter, right. I'm probably going to stick a couple of SPS frags in here, mm -hmm. see how they do. They might do horribly because of all the terpenoids and other stuff from the soft coils because typically they don't do too well together. Right. So obviously I'm not going to put in a Walt Disney frag. I'm going to put in something that's easy to grow sure. and give it a shot. Because the Euphilias are doing well and the, and the uh, Goniopora is doing well. Right. So I'm going to see what, whether an SPS does well or not. That and your clamor is doing well. Clam is all about light anyway. So, yeah. you know, I mean, so no, I don't think it's the light now. I think it's the water quality. Sure. I mean, test-wise, this tests out fine. I mean, is it as clean and nice as the, no. Right. It has probably double the phosphates of my other tanks. Right. But it's still perfect for these. I mean, the, the growth rates and the health and size is second to none of any soft coral tank I've had. Right, right, so, exactly. Yeah, when, when I came around the corner tonight, it just popped, right? Yeah, I mean, you can see it from out in the porch. You can see it pretty much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Heck and heck when yeah. it snows, you can see this blue light all the way back to the street <laughs> behind me, which the neighbors really like. <laughs> I remember you saying that on another video. They videos. still like it in the winter. <laughs> yeah. They know what, what, what's coming. Because they have a hot tub there, and they can watch everything in the blue light in here. <laughs> what's well, romantic indigo blue. That's, that's it. What it is, right? It's a very nice blue light. <laughs> okay, so then to kind of wrap this up, you're going to take this bad boy and you're upgrading it to a 120. Right. Because after three months, the corals are back to, back where, they to were. The, where the surface. So in three months, they may have grown another, in which case, we're getting rid of those corals. We're going to do some smaller ones. Uh, well, so, okay, so tell me this. Why wouldn't you drop it even further? I am. I'm going to drop these, that six inches, and this three inches, and raise it another six inches. So it's going to have nine inches to grow. Okay, so you are dropping it, but you're saying now uh, you're dropping it in the bigger tank. Yeah. Okay. Got dropping it. it in a bigger tank. I'm doing it. I'm not going to fool around and do one and have to do it again. Right. And I, I mean, it's it's not that big of a jump because it'll basically take three or four hours to do this because I have all the equipment. Everything's just going to fit into place. Screens still fit. Lights still fit. 
everything's here. It's just a taller tank. It's the exact same tank, only taller. So, so now would, is your plan to like literally take that water and put it into the new tank? Yes. Take everything out of there as it is, and you're going to put it in a new tank, and you're just going to add your extra gallons of water, whatever. Correct. That That's all I'm going to do. It's going to be like a big water change. Perfect. I'll have 50 gallon uh, pickle barrel sitting here. Yep. Take everything out. Put plastic down. Although I've spilled water everywhere here, so this carpet's <laughs> eventually going to go, and just go from there. So that sounds like a good segue to wrap it up. That'll be as far as this tank. That'll be the next video that we shoot. Will be the progression into the 120. Correct. Very good, sir. So take care of that cold of yours. Thanks. Hope to see you all soon. <laughs>